All right, so lots of people when they jump into Fusion 360 for the first time don't really know where to start, and so they don't start at all. So let's take a look at this part and how we can model it three different ways. So let's take a look at it to begin with here. From the right plane, we basically have a slight taper on the cylinder going from a larger end to a smaller end. I gave it a bit of an angled sharp edge here, which I'd prefer to do a little rounded next time, which we'll fix. I have this other little stem that comes up the back with a hole in the middle, and then a cutout on the side for some geometry that it mates to on the air fryer that this knob belongs to. So that's the basic shape, it's just a knob for an air fryer. So let's open up a new model. And when you have this blank page staring at you, you're almost always going to want to start from a sketch. So create a sketch and choose a plane that makes sense to you. Depending on how you're drawing this thing, the bottom plane or the uh, right plane here, six of one, half a dozen the other, choose whatever you like. So we're starting from there and we saw that it was a cylindrical type shape. So we're going to start with a circle and I'm going to give that a rough dimension of 40. We're not going exact here. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. So we're starting from 40. And for this attempt, we're just going to go solid straight into an extrude. And I know that I need to go 22 millimeters, which is good. But like I said earlier, there's a little bit of a taper on the side profile. So we're going to go over here and we can give it a taper angle of negative, let's say five degrees. And since we're not too concerned about this front edge and this front shape, since it's not really functional, it's just what you're gripping on, I can play this by ear or by eye and say negative five looks good enough for me. Okay, so now we have the general body of the knob and we can give it a fillet on this front edge. And again, I can do this by eye and say, yeah, there's probably okay. Hit enter. We can do the stem off the back. So we'll just create a sketch on that face. We'll make a circle and then we'll make another circle and we can give those some dimensions. So this is a 10 millimeters and this middle one was six. And so now we can go with the solid again, extrude. And I want to extrude that ring. Let's call it 16 or 15. There we go. And then we'll go from the right side again here, make a new sketch. Now we're looking at the side profile. We're in a sketch and we can project this line here. And I can add a circle, which I will add a constraint here to be vertical. And I can give it a dimension, let's call it three millimeters. And then I can add a line and another line. I can make these two horizontal to each other. We can see what that looks like here. Great. And I can add a dimension for this overall height, which maybe we'll call five millimeters. And we can give this guy a height too. But potentially we'll call, yeah, four. And that way we have a little bit of a lip for this to hook onto on the post that sits in here. And we can finish the sketch and we can go to extrude. We can make it a cut and we can select our profiles, which are the two from here. And I want to go through all and I want to go two sided. So I'm going through both sides and I also need to create all. There we go. So we're cutting all the way through and that's our notch. So that's our first way to go about this. And we have the basic geometry. You could leave it there, send it to your printer, print this off and it's completely functional. But let's look at a second way. 
So we've opened up a new part, and the second way that we're gonna approach this is as a revolve. So I'm just gonna revolve around this blue axis in the middle. So I'm actually gonna start from this plane here, and then I'm gonna draw a half profile of the entire part. So I'm basically coming over here, and this is the knob portion, and then I have I don't actually want to do over there. Then I have the stem that comes off the bottom. And now we can start adding a bunch of dimensions. So I know that I actually want to turn this into a center line, I believe, because then I can make some better dimensions. There we go. So I'm calling this 36 and I'm calling this one 40 and then this guy was 22 in depth and so now you can see that slight taper on the side and we have our depth of the knob and this here is going to be that six millimeter hole in the stem and this is going to be our 10 millimeters on the post and then this length here is what we called 15 earlier and that looks pretty good to me i have to add another line here to close that profile and now i think i can revolve this so basically go into solid revolve and i can choose I hold control on my keyboard. I can choose the other one there. I have the two profiles and they're automatically revolving around that one axis. So basically auto automatically selected it, but I could exit that out and we could choose it manually. And now we have that overall shape again. Hit okay. And I can fill it that the same way I did before. Oop. That's not what I wanted, just the one edge. Call that good. And now from the side profile, I would create a sketch and I would notch out that bottom again the same way I did before. So that's our second way to go about this. And let's look at a third. So a third way that we can look at this part is by creating a sketch on the base here, making a circle. We're going to dimension it with our 40. That's good for now. I'm leaving that behind. And then I'm going to create a offset plane. So offset plane of 22. And now on this plane, I can create another sketch. And I can make another circle, which is our 36, which was that smaller face. Good there, and now we can create a loft. The loft is just gonna try and connect these two shapes the best that it can. So profile one, profile two, and that looks pretty good to me. I'll say okay. I'll just get to the bottom here, sketch, we'll do circle and this stem we can do differently this time so we'll do 10 and we'll do an extrude we'll extrude it out by that 15 millimeters so it's solid and now we can make another sketch on the face here which is going to be the hole which is the six millimeters And now we can do an extruded cut. So extrude that guy as a cut. And then this way you could control the depth. So maybe you wanted to go further into the part, or maybe you wanted to go a little more shallow. So that just gives you a bit of uh, different control there. We can say maybe we just wanted to go 10 into the uh, little shaft that sticks out the back there. So that looks good to me. And we can do the same thing on here. We did the little fillet. So there we go. 
two millimeters maybe. And here's where we're gonna deviate a little bit more. So we can do an offset plane from the top here. And we're gonna go three millimeters down. And now I want to cut this part, this body in half based on this plane here. And we're gonna go modify, split body, body to split is this main one, and the splitting tool is that plane, hit okay. And so it doesn't look like it did much, but now in the bodies we have two different bodies that I can toggle between. So basically it cut it across that plane, which is good. And now I can hide this plane because I don't really want to look at it. It's in the way a little bit. And that's under construction. Plane is gone. Toggled that off. And brought that guy back. So now I want to add those details we had on the face. So these ones here. They're just for looks. Uh, they're not functional, but... I guess it is kind of functional because this little indicator shows you how far you've turned it, um, whether it's sitting at the home position or if it's at 10 or 20 or 30 minutes and so on. So it is a bit functional. We're going to create a sketch and we're going to give it a circle here. And this I'm really just playing by eye. I don't really have an exact spot where it's going to go. A little arc here. I want to make these two horizontal to lock them in. That looks pretty good to me. Um, I'm going to do a trim to get rid of that guy there. So now it's just one profile. And then we're going to create a slot. So slot's a pretty handy drawing tool. That's going to be our little dial indicator. And that looks okay to me. So now what we're going to do is use a surface tool and we're going to extrude this guy in both directions. And then we can also use this one in both directions. Say OK. And then I like to hide this body. And we're going to use that cut tool again. Split body. Body to split is that one. Splitting tools will be those two. And we'll say OK. Uh, yeah, I think I ran into this last time where it would only let me do one at a time. There we go, that one looks like it worked. So, there we go. And now I need to split again. Split body. That's the body to split. Splitting tool is that one. Okay, and there you go. So it doesn't always work perfectly the first time, but we got around it. And so the reason we did this is so that we can do a really slick import into our slicing software. So let's jump over there and see what that looks like. All right, so we exported that part as a step file from Fusion 360, and now we've imported it into Bamboo Studio. And I'll show you why we did that cutting of the bodies and why that's such a nice little feature to do if you're modeling these yourself. So we've imported it. It's all the default color, which is one. Um, but when we click on this, we can see that it's actually composed of multiple different bodies already when we imported it. And so now we can go through and we can color these. 
So I'm just hitting two on the keyboard to color. Actually, I'm going to color the entire thing black on the top level. And then I'm going to go through and find the ring that I want to be silver, which I'm going to hit three. And so now you can see that that's perfectly colored the way we want it to. No painting, no nothing, just exactly where we want it to be. Silver, it's silver, and black, it's black. So now you've seen three different ways to model this part. I don't necessarily think that there is a good, better, best. I think they're all just different ways to approach the same part. So I hope you like this one. I hope it made it easier for you to approach a part and know that there isn't quite a perfect way to approach any part. You can kind of just tackle it the way you want to. And as long as you end up with the result that you're looking for at the end, then that was the right way to go. And if it wasn't, then you just have to go back and fix the things that you broke and hopefully end up with a part that you want in the end. So I hope you liked that one and I will see you in the next one.